Good morning. Today's lesson, uh, lesson 1.8, beginning on page 35. Our topic today is estimate differences. And our essential question is how can you use compatible numbers and rounding to estimate differences? So we're familiar with compatible numbers and rounding because we use those concepts when we were estimating sums. So it's the same concept except we're applying it to subtraction problems. So unlock the problem. The largest yellow fin tuna caught by fishers weighed 387 pounds. The largest grouper caught weighed 436 pounds. About how much more did the grouper weigh than the yellow fin tuna? And it says you can estimate to find out about how much more. And over here in the blue box, does the question ask for an exact answer? Then how do you know? Well, we know that it's not an exact answer because it says about how much more. So it does not ask for an exact answer because it says about how much more. And then it's always a good idea in word problems to circle the numbers you need to use. Well, I know that I need to use 387 pounds because that's one of the, that's the yellow fin tuna. And I need to know how much the grouper weighed. So those are the two numbers we're going to be using. Okay, and so um, one way to solve this problem is using compatible numbers. <clears throat> and it says, think, compatible numbers are numbers that are easy to compute mentally and are close to the real numbers. And so one way to do it is, again, using the idea of quarters. Because uh, it's easy to go 25, 50, 75, 100. So it's easy to count up with quarters. So 436 is close to 425. So again, the last two digits here are, are a quarter. And in 375, uh, 387, a uh, compatible number that's close to that is 375. And 75 is three quarters. So now to subtract that, um, we want remember we wanted to do this mentally. We we could regroup and, and borrow from the hundreds, but how many quarters would you have to add to 75 quarters, or from 25 quarters to get to 75? It would be. 50, 75, 100, 125. Well, that's what we would have here. So let's count up from 375. 375, 400, 425, if we're counting by quarters. So it took me two quarters to get from 375 to 425, so 50. So the grouper weighed about 50 pounds more than your yellowfin tuna. What other compatible numbers could we have used? Well. We could have used 420 and 380. And then we would have just counted up from 380, 380, 390, 400, 410, 420. You know, we would have had about 40. <clears throat> um, we could have used. 450 and 400. That would have been easy to subtract in our head. And, and we could have even just changed one of the numbers. Again, this is we just want an estimate. So we could have just done 436, changed 387 to 400, and then we could have just subtracted that easily in our head without having to review. So 40, 50, 36, they're all kind of in, right neighbor, in the same neighborhood of 50. So 
Again, these are just estimates. We want an answer that's close. All right. So estimate, use compatible numbers. Okay, 73. And they're giving us a clue as to what they want us to use. They want us to use quarters in this one. So 75 is close to 73. So 22, I would change to 25. 22, the nearest quarter is 25. And subtract, we would get 50. In B, again, they're giving us a clue that we're going to be using quarters. So they change 148 to the nearest quarter to 150, which would be two quarters. And 376, the closest quarter is 375. And now we can easily do this in our head. Three quarters is one more than two quarters. And three take away one is two. So 225. All right, easy enough. Let's go on to page 36. Okay, another way, and we know this other way from um, when we were finding sums, is to use place value to round. And 436 take away 387 equals what? Step one, round 436 to the nearest 10. Find the place with which you want to round. Look at the digit to the right. So we've been doing this. So look at the digit in the ones place. We're rounding to the tens, 436. We're going to look at the digit to the right, the six. Six tells us to increase the digit in the tens by one. So we're going to have 440. <clears throat> Step two, now we're going to round 387 to the nearest 10. Underline the eight, because that's in the tens place. We're going to look at the digit to the right, the right, the one place is to the right of the tens. It's five or greater, so we're going to increase the eight which is in the tens place by one, and we get 390. Step two, Strut had a... Step three, find the difference of the rounded numbers. Okay, so we're at 390, and we have to get 440. Well, we can count up by tens. 390, 400, 410... 420, 430, 440, so 50. So the difference of those two numbers was about 50. Okay. Now, let's try these. All right, so 761. It's giving us a clue that we're going to round both of our numbers to the 800. I, yeah, that one happens to be 800, to the hundreds. <clears throat> so the, what they did, they, un, they looked at the 7 because that's what they wanted to round to. They looked to the digit to the right and it told them to increase the digit in the hundreds by 1. 528. So we're going to be consistent and round to the same place value. We're going to look at the digit to the right. 528, the 2 is less than 5, so I'm going to keep the digit the same. And 800 take away 500 is 300. <clears throat> All right, part B, again, they're giving us the clue that they want to round to the nearest 100. So what they did on the 287, they underlined the 2 because it's in the 100s place. They looked to the digit to the right. And it was 5 or greater, so they increased the 2 by 1. The 200 by 1. 642, we're going to underline the 600s. We're going to circle the 4 tens. 4 tens is less than 5, so we're going to keep the 600s the same. And 600 take away 300 is simply 300. Okay, let's move on to independent practice on 37. Use compatible numbers to complete the problem, then estimate the difference. Okay, so here I see 550. 
Well, so there's the concept of quarters here. The nearest quarter to 209 is four quarters or 100. So our estimate would be 350. Okay, so now number two, use rounding or compatible numbers. Okay, so in this case, it doesn't give us an idea as to what they want us to do. So you're, if you're kind of free to do what you want. And um, for instance, I could round to the nearest 10. And 57, I look to the digit to the right, and the 7 is greater than 5. So I would increase the 5 tens by 1, so I'm at 60 rounding that. In 21, I'd underline the 2, and I'd circle the digit to the right, which is 1. It's less than 5, so I'm going to keep the digit the same, what is often called rounding down. And 60 take away 20 is 40. 642 take away 137. So it does make sense to round both of these digits to the tens. 642, look to the digit to the right. The 2 is less than 5, so keep the digit in the tens the same. Round down. 137, the 7 is greater than 5, so we're going to increase the digit in the tens place by 1, so we're going to round up to 140. And now 640, take away 140, is easy to do in our head. That's simply 500. Number four, I see that 74, that's close to one of the quarters. It's close to three quarters. So I think I'm going to use quarters here. 375. 250 is close to two quarters. And so I'm going to put 250. And we should be able to do this in our head. Five and two and one. 125. Okay, so let's continue. <clears throat> use rounding or compatible numbers. In number five, let's round these to the nearest ten. Sixty-seven, look to the digits to the right, it's five or greater, so increase the digit in the tens place by one, round up. Two is in the tens place, look to the digit in the ones place, because it's to the right of the tens. It's less than five, so we're going to keep the digit in the tens place the same, and that's called rounding down. So 70 take away 20, 50. 81 take away 39. <clears throat> Round to the nearest 10. 81, the digit to the right is less than 5. So we're going to change that to 80. We're going to round down, keep it because the digit in the tens place is the same. 39, the digit in the tens place is 3. 9 is greater than 5, so we're going to increase the digit in the tens place by 1, and so we round up by round up to 40. 936 take away 421. It makes sense to, you probably could use compatible numbers, uh, compatible numbers and, and use two quarters. I think I'm just going to go around to the nearest hundred. So 936, digit to the right tells me to keep the number the same, so round down to 900. 421, it also tells me to round down. So I'm going to keep the digit in the hundred place the same, which would be 400, and that would be 500. <clears throat> okay, number eight. Let's use compatible numbers. 259 is close to 250, so two quarters. And 804, that would be close to four quarters, or in this case, 100, so 800. And how many, how much does it take to go from 250 to 300? It, it's two quarters, 
without getting to the nearest hundred. So, you know, it's going to be 50. That's 300. And how many do you go from 300 to 800? Five. So 550. 584 and 200. Let's round to the nearest hundred. 584, the 8's greater than 5, so increase the 100 by 1. 208, the digit to the right of 100's is less than 5, so keep the digit in the 100's the same. Subtract, we will get 400. <clears throat> uh, round to the 10's. 442. We're going to round to the 10, so this 2 tells me keep the digit in the 10s the same. So I'm going to have 440. 36, look at the 6 to the right of 3, it's greater than 5, so increase the 10th digit by 1. Make sure you line up the place value. Always line up the place value, very important. And if we're going to take 40 away from 40, that's 0, so 400. 429 take away 400 uh, take away 51 well 51 is close to two quarters 50 so let's change this to 425 how much would it take to get from 50 cents to a dollar 25 or 125 so we can count by quarters right 50 75 100, 125. So three quarters. So that's 75. Three quarters is worth, worth 75. If I put that 75 on the 50, that gives me 125. So 125 to 425 is three. 375. 491, take away 270. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm thinking what I want to do. I know 270 is is pretty easy to do just right by itself. So I think I'm just going to leave the 270. So I'm going to round the 91, 491 to the nearest 10. The digit in the ones place, which is to the right of the tens, tells me to keep it the same. So it's 490. So 90 take away 70, that's easy, that's 20. And 4 take away 2 is 2, so 220. 220 would be my estimate for that problem. <clears throat> uh, you probably could have changed this to 275 and 500. Um, 500 take away 250 would be reasonable too. 13. There are 262 students in the second grade, 298 students in the third grade. If 227 students take the bus to school, about how many students do not take the bus? So, we need to find out how many students there are total, first off. And so, <clears throat> We have 262 students in second grade and 298 students in third grade. Two hundred sixty-eight, uh, 262, if we round it to the nearest 10, uh, that would be 260. Uh, 298 rounded to the nearest 10 would actually make that 300. So there's about 560 students. Take away 227. Well, we want to know about how many. So let's round 227 up to the nearest 10. And that would be 230. So 
60 take away 30 is 30 and 5 take away 2 is 3 so about 330 students do not take the bus if if I had rounded to the hundreds I would have had 300 students plus 300 that would have been 600 600 take away 200 that would have been about 400 so this one was a little closer because I rounded to the tens so um, again we're trying to get close to an estimate we just want something close all right page 38 Use the table for questions 14 through 16. And in our mathematical practice today, it says use counter example. So that means examples that prove otherwise, counter examples. So Melissa said the estimated difference between the weight of the Pacific halibut and the yellowfin tuna is zero. Do you agree or disagree? All right, so what do we need to find? We need to look at the Pacific halibut and the yellowfin tuna. The halibut is 459 pounds, and the yellowfin tuna is 387 pounds. And she says that the estimated difference is zero. So how could she have gotten zero? I'm not sure I agree with her. Because if I rounded to the hundreds, that would be 500. Round to the hundreds would be 500, take away 400, so that's not zero. If I used rounding to the tens, it would be 460, take away 390. Again, that's not zero. <clears throat> if I use compatible numbers and had 400. 50 take away 375 and that's not zero so I would disagree So I disagree. If you use rounding, we prove that we wouldn't get zero. We also then use compatible numbers, and we still wouldn't. We still didn't get zero. So I, I'm going to disagree. All right. What's the question? The answer is about 500 pounds. So when I look at these three numbers, which one is close to 500? Well, if I round Pacific halibut to the nearest hundred. I get 500. If I round 133 to the nearest 100, I get 100. And if I round 387 to the nearest 100, I get 400. So it must be about how many pounds About how many pounds does the Pacific halibut weigh? And the answer would be 
500. But how much more is the total weight? Total weight of Pacific Halibut and Conger. How much more? Tells me to subtract. Total weight in this case means I'm going to add. Total weight in this problem, we're going to add the halibut and the conger, then the weight of the yellowfin tuna. Okay, so I'm going to have three numbers that I need. So let's start with the halibut, and we got we have 459 plus 133, and it said about how much more. So we want to get an estimate. So I'm going to try to get it as close as I can to these original numbers. And 459, I'm going to round to the nearest ten and come up with 460. 133 would be 130. So if I add those together, I get 590. So the two fish added together, the halibut and the conger, weigh about 590 pounds. Now we need to find about how much more that is than the yellowfin tuna. So the yellowfin tuna was 387 pounds. So let's go ahead and round the yellowfin also to the nearest 10. So I'm going to keep the 590, and I'm going to round the yellowfin tuna to 390, because 87 is close to 90. Subtract. So it's about 200 pounds more. And you just explain what you did. Okay, so basically all I've done is said if I round the fish's weight to the nearest 10, I, I got a sum of 590. When I rounded the yellowfin tuna to the nearest 10, I got 390. So the estimated difference is 200 pounds. All right, and our last problem in today's lesson, question number 17. A total of 907 people went to a fishing tournament. Of these people, 626 arrived before noon. Alina estimates that fewer than 300 people arrived in the afternoon. How did she estimate? Explain. So how do we get fewer than 300 people? Well, to come up with 300, it makes sense that she probably rounded to the nearest 100. Nine hundred seven rounds to 900. And 626 rounds to 600 so the difference would be 300 so that's it for lesson 1.8 you'll now do independent practice in Go Math. If you have any questions, stop and ask. You can also review the video, the math video tutor along with Go Math. 
or you can review the video that we did today. You can also use your book to help. And if you need to, you can stop and ask me questions. All right. So until then, uh, good luck on today's work. And we'll work on uh, mental math strategies for subtraction tomorrow. Bye. Right. Okay.